Hi, thanks for watching. What I'm about to share with you here is possibly the most painful experience I have had during this lifetime. I tell this person's story with hope that it will improve the lives of individuals suffering from brain disorders. I especially hope to influence the life of children and their parents. I was born in Santiago, Chile and grew up in a farm with pure air, clean water and abundant food. My mother, of Spanish origin, was a bridge teacher and is to this day admired for her intelligence. My father was Italian and was also intellectually sharp. He graduated from high school at 16 and received a degree in agriculture and engineering. So partly due to good genes, but also because of growing up in a healthy environment, I developed a fairly good brain. And when I was 17, <clears throat> in order to attend university, I took the SAT test. As it was customary in Chile, the results were published in the main newspaper of Santiago. I was pleasantly surprised to see that I had obtained one of the highest scores in the country. 725 for math, 796 for verbal abilities. Years later, I learned that SAT numbers correlated with IQ. My SAT numbers were indicative of an IQ of 153 in the 99.97 percentile of the population. So no doubt that at least at that point in time, I had, as a French psychologist put it, a, quote, sexy brain. It was an interesting compliment, since as a nerd, I have never felt sexy. But anyway, with those scores, I could choose any university and career I wanted. I decided to study engineering and signed up for the most prestigious engineering school in Chile at that time. For many years, I did well in my studies. However, during my fifth year in engineering, I became very interested in yoga and embraced the ovo vegetarian diet. I had grown up eating massive amounts of red meat. After all, my father was also um, raising cattle. Perhaps I rushed into these changes too quickly. But just a year into my new diet, I began to notice a significant decrease in my concentration. When taking tests at school, I developed a tendency to make one mistake after another, and I couldn't help it. My grades descended and I even failed a course that my friends passed without problem. I finally graduated, but my last two years were a struggle. My lack of concentration gradually got worse. And to make the matters worse, my lifestyle became significantly ungrounded. I was meditating three hours a day, but my life was not really improving. At the age of 28, I experienced a brief breakthrough in my meditations. For about four months, I was in joy all day long for no reason at all. It was a very interesting experience in unconditional joy. However, it was also a prelude to the worst years of my life. One day, without warning, I had a panic attack. The joy was completely gone and it was replaced by a state of constant anxiety that lasted for many, many, many years. In fact, years later, when I took the Burns Anxiety Inventory, I scored more than 50 points, which indicates extreme anxiety in this scale. I was experiencing the most uncomfortable anxiety symptoms day and night. <clears throat> At 30 and married, and my wife and I decided to try for a better life in the United States. I always had great admiration and appreciation for this country, so that same day, immediately after the marriage ceremony, we flew to Los Angeles. Upon my arrival in Los Angeles, my anxiety continued and worsened. One of the most painful symptoms was exhaustion. As an immigrant, 
During the first years I had to do intense physical work. Survival became a very, very painful challenge. <clears throat> I tried introspection, affirmations, more meditation, breathing techniques, every five minutes, psychotherapy, but nothing was really helping. I was just barely coping and when I was 35 I injured myself <clears throat> on a job demolishing walls in a house. At the chiropractor's office, I found a brochure titled Hypoglycemia Can Create Anxiety. Bingo! I found a book on hypoglycemia soon at the bookstore that described most of the symptoms that I was experiencing and persuaded me to try the diet recommended in the book. I didn't even have to abandon my vegetarian diet. In three days, I felt a new person. I was really surprised at the power of a simple nutritional intervention. So, now that I had more energy, I signed up for a master's degree in psychology and I began to rebuild my life. In a few years, I obtained the MFT license from the state of California to practice psychotherapy. With the new diet, most of my anxiety symptoms were gone. However, my attention deficit was virtually intact. I took the TOVA test and the score positive. The TOVA test is the most reliable and objective test to diagnose ADD. I took it again and I scored positive again. There was no doubt that I had a full-blown ADD. An ADD is supposed to be a disorder starting at childhood. However, I learned that nutritional mistakes can result in a full-blown ADD at any age. About six years ago, a friend of mine, Larry Richardson, an acupuncturist, introduced me to the concept of brain nutrition. I began using supplements and in one month I took the TOA test again and this time my scores in attention and in post control were not only normal but above normal, considerably above normal. The ADD had completely vanished. I continue taking brain supplements every day at maintenance levels level today. I include fish in my diet and very occasional, very occasional poultry and red meat. I work more than 65 hours a week and the brain I was originally blessed with has completely returned. In fact, I would dare to say that despite the fact that IQ is supposed to decrease as we age, today, thanks to a sensible diet, the brain supplements and continual intellectual stimulation, I feel that my brain is sharper than when I was young. Five years ago, with my wife, my friend Larry, and other professionals, we created the Brain Optimization Institute to help people with their brain disorders through the application of brain nutrition principles. Those clients who have enthusiastically and seriously committed to our programs have experienced fascinating positive results. We also created a successful certification course in brain nutrition counseling and later developed a master's in nutrition with emphasis in brain nutrition. I tell you, in my own healing journey, I opted for nutrition over medications. I can't tell you how happy I am in this decision. Despite the high IQ, I have done stupid things like everyone. However, the decision to avoid the pharmaceuticals and use brain nutrition was a very intelligent decision. Thanks to that decision, today I have my brain back. Thanks for watching.